Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. I can't believe it. He managed to do it again? Yep. And he's just going to keep on. What gives with this guy? What's his secret? Well, he always expects more. And he doesn't let up until he gets it. Ah. Hey, this is Michelle Spiva, your Practical Reese's of Wisdom. And I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. So stick with me. Join me on the flip. We're about to have ourselves a good old-fashioned boot camp. So welcome to your expectation boot camp. I'll see you on the flip. All right, welcome. Welcome to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with me, your host, Michelle Spiva, and your practical priestess of wisdom. So today is an exciting one. We're going to be doing a quick little boot camp where we get our muscles and stretch and grow and get some wisdom strengthening happening. So today we're going to be focusing on building our expectations. Yes. So the first thing I want to say is you get what you expect, not always what you hope. And from the A part, I was talking about when I first got out of um, school, I took a job, you know, trying to be grown and pay bills while I continued to go to grad school. And I started working in human resources. And I'm going to tell you, working in human resources and being on the other side of the desk to um, interview people and all of that kind of stuff was an eye opener. And at the time I was like, why is it that a lot of guys get paid more than what the women get paid? And yes, I don't add me, don't send me hate mail. Yes, there is a disparaging um, kind of situation with, you know, some sexism. I'm not going to argue against that. And what I'm going to say is this, this was the big eye opener guys tended to expect to get paid more and were willing to walk away if they didn't get what they expected. And that was one of the first aha moments I had for, you know, the success uh, secrets for getting ahead in business, if you will. And I was just amazed. But there was this one guy who had advanced in the company in record speed. And there was an internal rule that when you took a new position, you could only get a certain percentage increase. Not this guy. Mm -mm. This guy was not having it. And he was willing to let you know he was not having it. And he wouldn't let up until he got what he expected. And it was unheard of, the audacity of it. And him willing to walk away from a lucrative job to get what he wanted was... I. It was almost like it was a rock star kind of move and people were just loving his audacity. But it was a teachable moment for me as well when I was talking about it with um, a senior uh, HR representative who was showing me the ropes and teaching me how things were done. And she was basically saying, you are uh, you have a front seat to learn and see how people who get their way in life, how they work. And it had nothing to do with your hopes. It had nothing to do with pre- uh, preparation. It had to do with his audacity of expectation. And I was like, wow, here I am working on just uh, hoping and, you know, trying to put my best foot forward. And I'm playing a reactive game when he's playing a proactive game. And so I'm not saying that I want you to be a jerk. I don't want to, I don't want you to think that today's 
quick little boot camp is going to be about just uh, being aggressive. Not at all. But what I am going to say is, is hopefully by the end of this, you're going to have some aha moments and you're going to be able to rethink some things and re-strategize on how you approach what, uh, what you want out of, out of life or even what your next project is going to be. So stick with me. All right. So here is our objective for the next 25 minutes or so. We're going to be doing an overhaul of the fatty weight of self-doubt, self-pity, low self-esteem, low worth, and of fear of failure and a fear of loss. Now, there was a book I talked about a little while ago uh, that was a an unearthed uh, Napoleon Hill book called Unwitting the Devil. And he talks about this fictitious, I'm not going to call it fictitious. I'm just going to say he talks about this uh interview he did with the devil. Supposedly he captured him and forced him to answer him. And he talks about how the devil revealed how he he gets and snatches people's souls and, and gets them to work for him, sometimes unknowingly. And Two of the major things that stuck out that apply for today's boot camp is that he said if he said there are three things people fear. And he talked about how people fear aging, they fear death, and they also fear poverty or loss. And the way Napoleon Hill was able to set this up, he set it up as it being one of our greatest fears. And so when you talk about expectations, you got to be careful because with expectations, expectations require that you have a certain amount of risk involved, meaning that you got to call something in the future that you really don't have all of the components to make the call on. So there is a higher amount of risk and therefore it causes people to stumble and it causes people to shy away from having expectations. I'm not even talking about high ones. I'm just talking about expectations, you know, in general. There's a funny saying that, you know, we have in my neck of the woods is that, you know, people are generally greedy, um, but they're also generally uh, very conservative and play it safe. And the saying is, is my name is Jimmy and I can take all that you can give me. And that's the thing. Most people want to be given things when expectations don't have nothing to do with giving. Expectations is all about a proactive campaign to get what it is you want. What you expect, you get. Not what you expect is given. Nah. Mm -mm. And so, yes, we're going to be assertive and we're going to be proactive and we're going to have to work through the weight of doubt, pity, esteem issues and worthiness issues. OK, and with that being said, let's start working on a boot camp. OK, so the first thing I want you to do is when you are trying to up your expectation game, okay? First and foremost, do not try to go for the rafters. That is like saying, I want to uh, learn how to fly a plane. And then you immediately go and get in the cockpit by yourself in a uh, jumbo jet and try to fly it. That's not prudent. It is, it, it's just going to fail. So the first thing you want to do is at least you want to get into a simulator and practice a little bit. Would you agree with me? Okay, good. I hope you're agreeing. So what we're going to do is to start working our expectations in this boot camp and getting this this fatty, heavy weight that's been weighing us down. We're going to start with creating an MVP. Now, in this regard, that is not what you think it is. When we talk about an MVP, it's going to be a minimum viable projection, meaning that we're going to do something as safe and risk and, and and risk averse as possible to project something in the near future that we want to produce a positive outcome for. Meaning we're going to try to rig something into our favor for expectation. So the way I want you to do that is to start with uh, looking at things that if you don't get them, it's not too painful. So for instance, here's one. And it might be a morality thing for you. I'm just making an example. You don't have to say, oh, Michelle said do this and I don't feel right about it. But when you go to your favorite, you know, takeout and all of that and you're getting whatever you're getting, ask for a boon. It could be something as simple as, oh, you never ask, but oh, can I get an extra sauce? 
you know, after the fact and expect to get it. And if you don't, try and try again, not the same time, but the next time. And you'll be amazed that you'll start to see that you will start to get your little extra sauce. Or uh, when you're talking to someone and you know that you need to get something done and usually they shut you down, they're like, nope, can't help you. You got to follow the rules or whatever. Start to expect that it is going to go in your favor. And I will say this about when you're doing your expectation, um, because we're getting into these expectation strengthening exercises. You'll find that when you start taking this seriously and actually expecting that you're going to do it, you'll get little wisdom drops that will start to help you to get prepared and to put yourself in a better probability and a better position to get what it is you're asking for. So for instance, what if you've got to go and get someone to um, do something for you that is after hours? Yeah. And say for instance, it's the bank and you, you, you know you're getting there at the nick of time and you know that they're getting ready to close, everything's getting ready to shut down. And, but you, you know, it's not that you're trying to take advantage of them. It's just that it is what it is. And you go in and you expect, you expect to have favor with them and you expect to have somebody show you some mercy. Guess what starts to happen? I don't know how it works, but time and time again, I've seen it where even if you meet with initial uh, negativity or a neg, and you can see them trying to uh, position their lips to say no you'll figure you'll see that they'll be like well hold on a second let me check and you'll be amazed there's another book that I have uh, showcased on this podcast called um, Rejection Proof and this gentleman uh, had gone through something um, traumatic for him he had been rejected and he wasn't used to it and so he wanted to strengthen his ability to handle rejection. And so he put himself into situations where he knew there was a high probability of being rejected, meaning he put himself in high risk positions of projections that he wouldn't get what he was asking for. And the thing is, is once he got over the fear of them telling him no, weird things started happening. He started having people tell him yes, even when he wasn't expecting for them to tell him yes. In the book, he talks about how a lady who was a master donut maker at Krispy Kreme Donuts gave him a special um, accommodation that he asked for, and it became a viral thing when he posted it on his uh on his blog and over and over again during this year of rejection, he had a guy who was uh, willing to let him come into his backyard and practice his lawn hockey um, in his backyard. And the guy didn't even know him. Just weird little cute little things that started to happen. And it all came because he started doing these little bitty expectation and re- and rejection proof faith exercises. And so that's the next thing I'm going to tell you to do. So once you've created your MVP, your minimum viable projection to get something uh, in the very near future with little loss of uh, impact and risk, you know, yes, this is when you do get to play it safe this time, y'all. You're going to enact that. And then after that, you're going to start to get on doing your expectation strengthening exercises, which means that you're going to do them often. You're going to pick little things that you normally expect to not get or to be rejected. And then you're going to expect for them to go your way and go after them. And if you really want to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at the word, y'all. If you really want to uh, increase the probability of it happening, what you will do is you will do them often and you will do them uh, with simply expecting to be told yes. And if you are told no, you will quickly move on, tell them thank you. You won't try to change their mind. You'll just be like, thank you. And I have this of how I do mine. And I've said this for years. I've, many of my family members use it as well as a mantra. And for me, no means next. 
And when I say no means next, it's not necessarily that no means next that I'm going to move on to the next thing. It might be no means next to the next question, the next iteration, the next configuration to be able to get what it is I'm expecting. Because I'm going to talk to you about that in, a, in, in just a few minutes about what it takes to work with getting the expectations that you expect. Okay. So because of that, I want you to get clear and to get an exact, get exact, I mean, excuse me, I want you to get clear and specific on a outcome that you can live with. And when I say an outcome, you can live with, meaning the aftermath. So there is this famous statement that says um, in marketing and sales that people are not there to buy the drill. People are there to make, uh, to get the easiest way to make the whole. And this goes beyond that when you're dealing with your expectations. So it's not even that you're trying to find the best way to make the whole. You are trying to get to hanging the beautiful picture that you want. You're trying to get to the point of beautifying your environment. So take it as far out to the nth degree of what it is you're really wanting as possible. And that way, when you elongate the outcome of what you expect, then you get to move with the way the world is and, and, and the way things happen that are out of your control that will still allow you to be able to strengthen and procure your expectations. So what do I mean by that? This is a statement by um, an online um, activist by the name of Yvette Carnell. And she says that a seat at the table doesn't mean food on a plate. And when I heard her say that, I wrote it down because it was so profound and impactful that I knew, I was like, oh my gosh, this is changing the game on how we set expectations. Because if you sit down at a table and you just make the assumption, which is not an expectation, by the way, you make the assumption that because you made it to the table that you're going to get food. Nah, that's not the case. What happens if you go to a restaurant, you sit down and you never take a menu. No one ever comes and asks you to order or you don't have any money. And they're like, sorry, <laughs> That is what a lot of people do when they first start considering how to up their expectations. They think that proximity and they think that um, being in the vicinity and uh, the inference that if I'm here, that it's going to work out. You can't leave your expectation out, expectational outcomes up for grabs. You can't leave them to the capricious nature of life. You can't believe and expect that, oh, I'm here. So it's just going to happen. No, you can't because that's not how it works. And so when we talk about getting clear and making sure that your expectation has a specific outcome, if you can't remember anything else about what I mean when I say that, just remember this little statement, a seat at the table doesn't mean food on a plate. So make sure that you, you go past the seat at the table for your expectation. And if it is that you want to be full and have had a great meal, you need to have your expectation that by the end of the night, you will have a full belly and you will have had exquisite food. And therefore, it don't matter if you get at a table, your outcome is still going to be fulfilled because you got specific. I hope this is making sense. I wish I could, you know, see your face and get your feedback and see if you're nodding your head with me or not, because this is a really powerful wisdom skill that people would do well to start consciously working on all the time. You have got to not take your outcomes for granted. Expectations require work. They require finesse and they require skill. Don't ever think that just because you show up and say, I'm here, that that means that you're going to get what you're wanting or even what you're expecting. And going back to when I was working as that uh, um, human resources specialist, that's what it was. And I started seeing that guy. I wanted to know more. I never talked to him specifically because there would be no need for me to. And I wasn't supposed to let him know that, you know, we talked about his antics, you know, in uh, the HR department. 
But what I did do was, is I watched him. And by the time I left, he was a regional division manager and he had been working this all over. And it was just, he, it was, to me, I was getting paid to get an education by learning how somebody thought who was, who had a different frequency and a different approach to life than I had ever at that time uh, thought could exist. And so what I started to see is some of the stuff that I'm telling you right now, he grew his expectations and he did it because he was not afraid to lose. He was not afraid to uh, put himself out there, but he also was really good at being specific on his expectations because there was one time and I I shouldn't tell these specifics. So I'm going to try to make this as general as possible so that people who know me don't, you know, be able to put this back together. Um, But there was, I'll say not one time. I'll just say this. He did things like if he was expecting to get a certain compensation or and yeah, there was there was something that the company did uh, if your team or your division won something and his expectations were so different. I was like, I wonder how he's going to work this and trust and know he worked it out. But what he would do because his expectation muscle was so refined and strong, he was always I say 50 billion, but he was always so far ahead of what people were thinking before he even posed the expectation. And it was like watching a um, a whirling dervish and a ballroom dancer in one. Because if you told him no for one thing, it didn't matter because he was always going to get what he expected. But he has so many different ways and finesses and moves to accomplish the same thing. So it was kind of like when you got into his world, you knew you were going to lose. You just didn't know how. And that was the most frustrating thing for our director of HR because she she would say that of him. She says, I know he's putting me in a trap. I know that he has an outcome in mind, but he's just so darn good at not tipping his hand, obviously, of what he wants. And he has a lot of different ways to get there. And so that is an ex, um, an advanced skill for expectation. But I want you to be able to know that you can work toward that. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things that I, and I almost said that man's name, some of the things I learned by observing him from afar. And that was, he always made allowance for the randomness of life. And I haven't read this book yet. It's on my to read list, um, but it's uh, uh, a book about uh, the the randomness uh, tricked or duped by randomness. I think is the name of it. I'll I'll find the the name of the book. Well, you know what? We we don't have enough time for that. So anyway, it's just a book on randomness. <laughs> Fooled by randomness. That's the name of it. Fooled by randomness, and it's on my to be read list. And it talks about the whole idea of randomness. But this happened many years before this book came out. And I got it at the time because what he would do is he would work with the understanding that life is fickle and that you can't uh, plan for every iteration that will happen because at any given time, free will and uh, the will of destiny are at work messing up stuff. And so the only thing you can plan for is that random uncertain acts will happen. And so what he would do is he would uh, make sure that he allowed for his expectation to be more of, and when I observed it, it looked like a kaleidoscope, meaning that it would change. It would still be beautiful with the same components, but it would change depending on how the situation changed, but he would still get his general outcome. And so making allowance for randomness where you allow the randomness to work in your favor means that you allow the changes that life will throw you to work into this beautiful kaleidoscope of uh, actions. And when he worked with randomness, the thing was, is he never got miffed or off his game or shaken. Because even in his final expectation, he was always expecting the random. And that was a big aha. And as I look at it, um, a lesson in in uh, pure wisdom. And so 
with that, I want you to start working because this is your boot camp. I want you to understand that your expectations should be so flexible that they can change on a dime with how dynamic the times are. And that means that you can't, once you start doing these shorter expectations, you got to start learning that expectations uh, have different benchmarks and they can have a long game as well. You got to have patience with your expectations. And so with that, I need to, you to understand that future outlooks and, predict, and predictions are always based on things remaining status quo. And that is an exception and not the norm. And so when you look at stuff, if you say, oh, because this normally happens and you put too much, um, too much credit or, or credibility in patterns that have already happened, then that's when that high risk that is averse starts to happen and people get shaky about going after their expectations because they haven't correctly assessed that there is, there's just a certain component that you got to work for. Even builders and contractors, when they're taking on building uh, contracts, they put in these co- uh, contingency percentages to allow for randomness, ra- uh, acts of God, um, and the unknown, because you never know what that unknown component is, but you can actually kind of plan for it if you understand that part of expectation requires you to delve into the riskiness of a future cast of what you want to happen in the future. All right. And so once you understand that life does not work by predictable status quos, and that you never know when something is going to throw a wrench into something else, you can make sure that your expectations are made to work with changing times. So I want you to, as you are moving from starting with the small little MVPs, the minimum viable projections, where you go and you do, you ask for like a little sauce, a little extra sauce when you order your food or just a little something extra and you truly expect to get it, but you're okay if you don't. And then you start expanding that to pick up um, the frequency that you do it. And then you start elongating them. And then you start doing what our dear friend started to do and um, planning for the randomness of life and the fickleness of people. You can start to stack expectations. And when you start to learn how to stack expectations, they're kind of like, I look at them in my visual eye as lily pads on top of the water that allow you to walk on water to get to where you want to way shorter than someone else. And so you start with one closest to you. And as you get more proficient, you might be able to leap further distances to the next lily pad as your expectations uh, get better and you get more familiar and stronger in your belief in your expectations. Because I'm going to tell you, once you overhaul that fatty weight of self-doubt, self-pity, low self-esteem, low self-worth, you get light as a feather and you start to be like, okay, I can do this. And it's okay if they tell me no, because no means next. And the next part is dealing with the randomness and the unexpected things of life. So I have a contingency plan. I have another expectation that I can go after that still gets me to my final outcome. Because remember, you're not going to only look at the immediate expectation. You're going to look at, you're going to look past the drill past the hole in the wall, past the picture to the ultimate of being able to enjoy a beautification of your environment. That's your true outcome and that's your true expectation. And if a, if you can't get a drill, then maybe you can get something else. You can get those little putty things that you stick on the wall that do the same thing. But your expectations are continuing to be filled. So, I want you to consider to activate that inactive portion of your expectations. When is the last time you activated expectation? And I'm going to tell you, you know the difference between an expectation and a hope. When you are encountering someone and you find yourself saying, please, 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 please let them say yes. That's just hope. And hope is not bad at all. You need it. But you know you have enacted 
expectation when you're sitting there and you're looking at them and you're like, don't matter. Either you're going to give it to me or somebody else going to give it to me because I'm getting it, <laughs> you know? And my hope is that it's you. I-, I will tell you from personal experience, let me tell you what expectation will get you to do. Expectation will get you to learn how to curry favor with people. There have been times when folks are like, no, I can't do it. And my expectation was before I get off this phone, I'm getting this done. And expectation locks in with wisdom and wisdom will have you saying things like, okay, I understand that you can't or either won't. But let me ask you this question. Is it within your power to do what it is that you're telling me can't be done? Is it a situation where either you can't or you won't do it? And I'm telling you, the first time I asked someone that, they were flummoxed and they were like, you got me. I, ca- I, have, the, I have the power to do it. And because you got me, I'm going to do it. Yes, I'm telling you what I've experienced dealing with expectation coupled with hope and getting clear on what it is and allowing that kaleidoscope to continue to move so that I can continue to be flexible and continue to stack these expectations to be able to get my final outcome. I'm telling you. But please, beloved, listen to me as I got to close this down. Do not think that you're going to be able to sustain this ability to get your expectations without continuing to work on it. It's a muscle and it will try you. And you cannot think that you're going to be able to have an expectation of flying a plane and then just because you want to do it, you go do it. That's not how it works. You got to work up to it. So I hope that our boot camp has been uh, highly useful to you today. And guess what? My time is up. I thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spivey, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with another podcast of Wisdom Smack. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.